he's a compadre that's joined the paparazzi after stepping off the uh, NFL gridiron, and thankfully he is part of the NFL media group and NFL media analyst, who you can also follow on Twitter, at Jones underscore Drew 32, one of the all-time great Jacksonville Jaguars. Maurice Jones-Drew joining me here on the program. How are you, MJD? I'm doing great, Rich. How are you? Uh, well, I think both of us are feeling a little better than Jamal Charles this morning. Um, did, have right. you, did you ever have a fumble game like that where you feel like you cost your team the game? MJD. Uh, I had I had a fumble game, but uh, the, you know Blaine Gabbard led us to victory against uh, the Baltimore Ravens on Monday night. So I fumbled three times, and I thought the game was over. Then Blaine completed a a really good pass to Jason Hill, and and uh, Jason got the first down. We were able to nail the clock out, and our defense played solid. And, we won, so I, I didn't feel as bad as uh, Jamal did. Yeah, I know, because I guess you were fortunate that you had your quarterback be able to get the ball back with something to do, and Jamal, it happened with 36 ticks left on the clock in, in that game. Uh, what do you think is going on with the Broncos' offense between Peyton Manning and his coach, Gary Kubiak, Maurice? Well, you know what, Rich? We, we talked about this uh, last night while we were watching the game. Yep. Peyton is so used to his offense that he's, it's like teaching him Spanish or teaching him Chinese. I mean, this guy has to learn a new terminology. He's not used to all the protection. You know, he doesn't feel comfortable. So it was good last night to see him kind of get back into his offense and, and run that uh, no huddle, hurry up, quick throws, and get the ball out. Um, I, I thought when he was at his best was in that second quarter and then towards the end of that fourth quarter when they scored, what is it, like 14 points in 30 seconds or something like that. Uh, he was doing. He was doing what I was used to seeing in Jacksonville. And and are you there, MJD? Yeah, I'm here. Mercy. So so in terms of this offense, though, um, it, it, how, how do you see this moving forward? Do you see more of uh, of the Manning offense taking things over, or Kubiak uh, in, in the next game or two, making sure the run game gets? hammered down because this isn't working the run game that's supposed to bring the passing game to the fore maurice right well you know what rich i, I think they're gonna they're gonna continue to try to find the, the perfect balance of Peyton manning's offense and gary kubiak's offense and and they're, right now they're having a little a rough time i mean their offensive line really isn't that good um they're getting beat at the point of attack all the time and so now they're, they're trying to find ways to get cj anson who i drafted in fantasy uh the ball and, um, you know, right now it's just not working. So hopefully in the week, in the, uh, the near weeks to come that uh, C.J. Anderson and his run game can get going and help Peyton so he doesn't have to shoulder all the, all the pressure and all the, all the responsibility. Now, I know you might have been traveling uh, for the postgame show, but, uh, so I'll paraphrase what Emmanuel Sanders told uh, the postgame show crew in Arrowhead that essentially the team prefers or is more comfortable with the two-minute offense than anything else. And what, what should we read into that when we hear one of the star wide receivers essentially say, we like the way Peyton plays football? Uh, it, well, I, I guess I can – what he really is trying to say is this is what we're going to do from now on if we want to win games. Simple as that. I mean, that defense is playing lights out. Um, and the way they played uh, last night and, and last week, with Peyton's offense running, I mean, they, they, they're they they're on the verge of going to another Super Bowl if they continue that the way they're playing. So we'll see. I mean, it, it's going to be an exciting year, Rich. I, I mean, I'm really excited about watch, watching football from this point of view and, and seeing how things go. Maurice Jones, Drew, joining me here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. What type of week do you think DeMarco Murray's going to have against his former team, MJD? Oh, man, you know what? I, I think he's going to I think he's gonna blow up. I think this is where we see the Eagles offense get back to what they're used to doing with that high tempo, high pace, uh, no huddle. You're going to see it, um, DeMarco Murray run the ball a lot, I think. Hopefully Sam Bradford can get back and, and play the way we all hope and, and think he can play. And, and I think that they're going to beat the Cowboys this week. That's one of my, uh, pr my bold predictions is that Tony Romo has to throw for 300 yards and they're still going to lose. You got a bold prediction. I didn't know that you were in the bold predicting game. Yeah, you know what? We're trying it on the now. We're trying to do a, a, a little bold predicting. Okay. I'm just throwing stuff out there. I also predicted Aaron Rodgers throws his first INT at home. Mm -hmm. and you're, I, think that, I think that's bold. Okay. That is, yeah, I would say that. And you're referring to NFL now uh, when you say the now. I like that. And Adrian Peterson, what about a bounce back week for him, Maurice? Oh, he, he has to have a bounce back week. I, I don't think it was. 
I think he had some jitters early on, but the more you touch the ball, the, the less that ha- tends to happen. For him to only have 10 carries in the game, four and a half, I didn't think that was uh, the best game plan going in. So um, hopefully North Turner and his staff, they, they figure out the best way to utilize one of the probably the greatest running weapon in football, and uh, they get back on track and they beat Detroit. Let me talk about a, a couple of your former teams, Maurice Jones-Drew. Your, your most recent team with Oakland, uh, Latavius Murray had a heck of a December and burst onto the scene, and everybody's expecting to see if he can be the guy toting the rock for Oakland. Do you think that this is a potential for him to have a season to do that, or what, what issues might be in front of him for that, Maurice? Well, you know, one of the issues they have in Oakland, their offensive line on the right side, you have two guys playing out of position. You have a right tackle who played right guard last year, and then you have a left tackle playing right guard. So they're going to have some issues on that right side. I think the left side is solid. Um, And to be honest with you, I feel like they're not trying to force the ball to Latavius Murray. I mean, sometimes you have a guy that's 6'4", 230 pounds, who's a very good open, open field runner. You have to try to find a way to get the ball in the open field. I mean, if it's a toss, if it's somehow running on the edge, if it's, uh, you know, throwing screens to him, lining them up outside, throwing quick hitches, find a way to get this guy the ball and let him get into a rhythm. He's a, ry- a rhythm runner like most backs are. The more touch they get, the better they get. And so hopefully uh, they can get back on track. It's going to be a tough challenge this week against Baltimore. But, uh, you know, I know the Raiders, they, uh, their defense is playing better. You add uh, Alden Smith with uh, Khalil Mack, who should have some real good guys come off the edge. And uh, hopefully Charles Woodson comes back this week. And, and, and then we'll see. But you have to try to force feed the ball. I understand you have Amari Cooper, and everybody's excited about that. But we know how you win games in this league. It's, it's the running back um, touching the ball 20 to 25 times a game. And as the spot where you've got the franchise records for most career rushing touchdowns, most touchdowns in a season, and most rushing yards in a season, in Jacksonville, they couldn't get the ball past the 50-yard line in the second half of their season-opening loss at home to the Carolina Panthers. And there was a lot of uh, questioning of the play calling this week. And Blake Bortles responded to that when asked this point-blank question. Take a listen to this uh, Q&A with the media this week. What is your reaction when you hear fans get on play calling? Because it's a very common yeah. lament after a loss. Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's like... Uh... I don't know. I, I think it's like a kindergartner saying something it, to a kid in college. Kindergartner saying something to a kid in college. He's getting a lot of heat for that in, du, in Duval <laughs> County, Morris. You know what? Uh, he's, he's learning. And that's one of the things you have to understand, Jacksonville. We've, even when I was there, we would have to answer questions. Uh, there are tough questions to answer. You know, fans are hungry for a winner, and we're not winning. And they're obviously they're not winning. So people were asking questions. Sometimes you, you have to understand that, that's part of the job as a, as a quarterback. And then also, um, with his play, he needs to focus on his play as well. You know, um, you can't turn the ball over like that. You can't allow them to run it back uh, for a touchdown as well. I know he has a lot of talent. He has a ton of upside. But we, we have to continue to see him improve with these young receivers. You know, the NFL, no one has time for you to wait anymore. No one's here to groom a quarterback like the Packers did Aaron Rodgers. They want you to come in right now like Andrew Luck and be successful. And so, um, if he can't do it, you know, you're going to hear a lot of grief. And that's just the league with the way it is right now. And hopefully he understands it. I know Gus has probably talked to him. And, uh, you know, it'll be, they'll be fine. I think they're, they're, they're on the right track. You get Julius Thomas back. You get a couple guys on the offensive line playing a little bit better. I think they'll be all right. Their defense is lights out. So we'll see how it goes. They play the Miami Dolphins at home this week. Uh, last, last one for you. I'm going to let you eight clap for me here. Uh, what, do you, what do you think of Josh Rosen and your alma mater with Jim Mora taking on BYU at the Rose Bowl this weekend and how they've fared so far, Maurice? You know, well, first of all, I, I think uh, Coach Mora's done a great job acquiring a ton of talent. Um, and, and, you know, these guys have been playing with a running quarterback, and, and Brett Huntley was, a, was one of the best to come out of UCLA. And then you're able to surround a pocket passer, a guy who's uh, his arm is pretty strong. He has touch on his ball. He's a guy that's been groomed to be a, a QB. And you can see how – you know, regardless of what happens, the talent around this team, they're, they're taking over. So we had a, some two good, really good games against Virginia and uh, UNLV. But uh, this next one's going to be a tough one because BYU always finds a way. So I, I'm excited to see what uh, Mac – or not Mac, but uh, Miles My, Jack and New Bill, that defense can do against his quarterback because it seems like every time they need a play, this guy makes a play. So 
hopefully uh, these guys can come out and shut them down and, and uh, offensively can run the ball well and, and play action pass and, and put some points on the board. Thanks for calling in, Maurice. Fun watching the game with you last night. Yeah, we got to do it again. Hopefully, hopefully we get a chance to watch the whole game next time. That would be good. You got it. That's Maurice Jones-Drew, NFL Media Group, joining me here. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.